Um, so I'm Jason, work at Mavenlink. We're all wearing shirts, so it's pretty obvious. But uh, one of the things that we do a little bit differently is we're an XP shop. Uh, and so we pair program every single day. And so after hearing Holdy talk a little bit about uh, pair programming, I thought I would give just a few tips and things that we've learned as we've uh, engaged in this process and practice. Uh, so first of all, why do we do pair programming? Uh, it makes it easy to switch context. So if you have a long running feature and you want to make sure that all of your devs are kind of available on it, it's pretty easy to be able to swap out the pair and have someone come in and say, oh, here's what we're working on, kind of walk you through it and continue work. Uh, and that kind of leads into the second point, which is knowledge transfer. Uh, we found it super, super, super valuable uh, in onboarding new devs and in onboarding new members to different teams. So if you have that part of the code base that no one likes to touch, it's scary, you have a couple experts, Pair program is a way, great way to kind of transfer that knowledge in an effective manner. Uh, better decisions. Uh, if you have two people with different perspectives, maybe different experience levels looking at code together and working on it together, a lot of times the discussion that comes out of that is fantastic and the things that you come up as a team uh, is better code. Obviously not always. Uh, this does not replace like a good code review practice. All right, so here's some of the tools that we use that make this really pleasant and effective experience. Um, if you're doing remote pairing, which we do a lot uh, with San Francisco and Salt Lake Office, we use Screen Hero. I actually kind of prefer it to uh, in-person pairing uh, because you can listen to your music and you have two mouse cursors. So pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, and if you can, for your pairing setup, this is the best setup. Two monitors, two keyboards, two mice. So that once you kind of have a good relationship with someone, you pair with them a lot, it's very fluid and you're able to very naturally switch driving uh, as the need arises. So some of the techniques uh, that we use and that I've found effective um, is to switch often. So when you're first starting out working with someone, maybe it's a junior, maybe it's someone you've never paired before, uh, find like some time or some way to switch. You know, maybe say someone's a driver for a while or someone's the navigator, we switch on, or I like to switch on Pomodoro sometimes if you're familiar with that technique. Uh, but just make sure that you're swapping up a bunch. Um, Ping pong pairing, um, which I think is test implementation or? Right, a failing test on the other person. Exactly. Like yep, that's the second part. So we do ping pong pairing. We just basically, a lot of times, we'll say, like, you want to write the tests or do you want to write the implementation? Um, and so do that. That way, everyone kind of gets a chance to do both. Also, kind of fun is you're writing the tests first. You get to kind of conceptualize them. By the time it's your turn, you have a good idea of how to solve the problem. Uh, and use an editor that both are comfortable with. Um, so if you're a Vim master, but your person doesn't know Vim at all, or is an Emacs person, just pick Sublime. Do something that everyone knows how to use. Or there are tools where you can share editors. Um, we use RubyMind pretty frequently. Um, yeah, I know that's a controversial one. Um, practices, uh, swap your pair frequently. And by that, I mean make sure that you're pairing with lots of different people on your team. Uh, for us, we typically pair with the same person for a day. Sometimes we'll swap up uh, every half day. But the important part is that you're sharing context and learning from everyone on your team, not just a couple people. Um, two, no distractions. This is kind of an obvious one, but like close Slack, uh, turn off your phone, um, be fully, fully dedicated to the pairing session. Set time to be able to do those things and to be able to look at your notifications, especially if you have meetings or you, know, you have to be available to answer questions. But focused pairing time is the most productive time. Uh, let the junior drive. This is a tough one for me a lot of the times. I like to just, you know, go as fast as I can. Uh, but what I'll do a lot of times, I'll like literally sit on my hands or I will unplug my keyboard. Uh, and that's super important when you're first working with someone. So let them get familiar with the code base. Let them be able to kind of just know how to get around. Uh, even if it's going to feel slow to you, by, by the time you've done it a while, they'll be a lot more effective and very quick. Uh, and do it often. Um, a lot of people see pair programming as sort of like an occasional thing. I have a hard problem to solve or I'm trying to onboard someone. I was not really a believer. Uh, I had a hard time with pair programming when I first came to Mavenlink. I love it now. I think I write better code. I think I learn more. And so try, you know, if you like it, if it's something that works for you and your organization, slowly replace it more and more until the majority of your code is paired. Thank you. Come to the meetup and other musings.